Good evening. Good evening. My name is My name is Anthony Meyer. I am the headmaster of Brookline High School, and it is such a pleasure to welcome you to life at BHS for the class of 2021. So I want to especially welcome members of the class of 2021. Thank you so much. You should give yourself a round of applause. We are so glad to have you tonight, and while you might be glad to see me and hear from me for a little bit, you certainly will be glad to hear from our deans, uh, Brian Poon, and from Scott Butchart, uh, who is trying to get people into the auditorium. What you'll be happiest and most excited, uh, or who you'll be happiest and most excited to hear from are members of our current ninth graders, uh, members of the class of 2020. So just a couple of thoughts in welcoming you. Um, one, we treat the auditorium where we hold assemblies for the class and hold assemblies for up to two classes, about a thousand and a hundred students. It, this is a classroom and as such we do not engage in cell phone usage and that's important. So I think what I would like you to do as much as as students, it might be exciting to wonder where your friends are seated and what they're thinking about what I'm saying right now. I would love us to be fully in the moment right now. And so silence your cell phone, better yet, turn it off, and let's be here together this evening uh, at this important transition event. So feel free to take a moment. Hey, there we go. I like that. Yes. And we need to remind ourselves sometimes, why do we have policies? We don't have policies just because we believe students shouldn't use cell phones. We believe strongly that human engagement is incredibly important in a school. This is democracy at its best, right? This is a gathering of the people, with the people, for the people. And so we're not going to, to do that. Enough about that. I want to not only welcome you and thank you for coming, I want to apologize. I worked with staff here to set dates for these transition events um, long ago. I shared them internally. I shared them with uh, seventh and eighth grade PTO leaders. I did not realize, we did not realize at that point, really until this week, that this evening is Ash Wednesday. And so I want to apologize for that. that. That is my responsibility to look ahead at the calendar. And I just did not make that connection. What we have tried to do um, to work with that, we have the Brookline Interactive Group, which is an incredible local organization um, and located just over at our Unified Arts Building. They are recording uh, this evening. So if you know, sorry, I become very emotional when I think about the Brookline Interactive Group. Okay, good. It's good if you're a student here, know that I will sometimes use humor as a masking device. In that case, I was masking the sound my voice made. Um, that was supposed to be funny, too. Seems like I missed the boat. Um, but we believe it's important to be able to share this with people who couldn't be here. So if you know someone who wasn't able to make it, please let them know that this will be uh, online on, um, on the high school website so that other people can access that. Uh, I am going to be in and out of this meeting because we have our Brookline High School Building Committee meeting. So just to acknowledge for students and parents, we are growing. Uh, we have enough space to fit everyone next year and, and we are going to keep growing and growing. And so we're thinking about how to use space and how to prepare for a renovation. And so there are meetings with many stakeholders in the town about what is going to be the best design for this high school long term. Uh, that said, I am so incredibly excited to welcome you tonight, to welcome you to Friday. Is, uh, are students aware that you're coming here on Friday and hearing about electives at BHS? Good. H nodded heads. Good. Um, nodding heads. Great. Um, so it's really my pleasure at this point to turn over uh, the evening to Scott Butchart, Dean of Students, and Brian Poon, also Dean of Students, who will then do the great work of allowing you to hear from students 
and ask questions of students. So thank you so much and enjoy life at BHS. Oh, he's got a clipboard. That's exciting. Great. Thank you, Mr. Meyer. Um, I'm Scott Butchard, as Mr. Meyer just said. It's a real pleasure to see so many young, you know, fresh-faced scholar, uh, student athletes with us tonight. Uh, very big class, as you can tell, we don't usually fill the auditorium. Does anybody know how many of you there are? 530 or so, which is big, because we're graduating 475. So you can tell that you are the class of the future. So that's a nice thing. Uh, Mr. Meyer was gracious in not saying that I'm the old guy here. Uh, I've been here since 1984. It's not, just, no, it's not laughter that I expected there. Okay. Plus, what you don't know as well is I graduated from college in 1976, which is, makes me even older. So I'm, it's okay. That makes uh, ne next year our 30, my 34th year here, and my 42nd year in public education. All of which have been a blast. Thanks to the kids. And this is probably the best time when both Mr. Poon and myself will tell you just a little bit about ourselves, uh, besides being so old. Uh, I grew up in the great state of Maine. State of Maine? Somebody out there? Sure. Went to South Portland High School, graduated in 1972. I went to Colby College and graduated in 1976, where I studied French and Spanish. And then I went to Middlebury College and got a, a master's degree in a few years after that. And then uh, I taught several years in a middle school. Now, middle school teaching is a very special thing, as I bet you know, and your teachers make you know as well. Uh, I loved eighth graders. Uh, I didn't come to high school because I was tired of eighth graders, really just because it was a, a career change. But eighth graders are a blast. Don't you agree? Yes. So do your parents, I'm sure. Um, uh, so, and then, uh, actually, I met my wife right here, as did Mr. Poon, so that's a trend. Okay. I don't think Meyer did. No, he met his lovely wife. Yeah. Uh, and then I had four sons. One's age 21, age 19, age 16, and age 12. And he's still cute now and then, um, which is a good thing for me. Um, so I've got a fair amount of experience with youth, um, and I, you know, we really enjoy having you come. What I'm going to tell you about briefly, if you can pay attention to just a few details here, because you know, the first few days, first few weeks are a little confusing feeling to the students. And you guys, ninth graders, will I bet agree. And so we want to, you know, diminish as much as possible the confusion factor for you. Uh, for one thing, there are two deans who are going to share you. Um, so half of you will be officially assigned to Mr. Poon's caseload and half officially to my caseload. But we work in tandem very closely. And so we will both know all of you, just not the first day. Um, yeah, good. Uh, additionally, there's another associate dean with whom I share grade, next year I'm sharing grade 11 with Ms. Thomas, so that makes three deans, um, all of which will be there for, to help you with whatever you need. Additionally, of course, we are on the third floor, we've got a suite of offices, so when you're confused, that's where you go, uh, one floor above here and right opposite the balcony doors. So you'll find us all there along with your four guidance counselors. The four guidance counselors are assigned to you randomly, so you can't tell even if a sibling, you can't tell necessarily who you're going to have for a counselor. But all the counselors have you for all four years and develop a very good working relationship with you and with your parents. Um, they sent three pieces of information, so pay attention to this. Guidance counselors said it's good to have a study hall. It's good to have a study hall. My own experience at home is that that's true as well. Take some of the homework pressure off. And so if your schedule ends up offering you one, it may make you the best thing that's happening for you. Rather than another course, you may really enjoy getting that homework done right here. Um, the other piece of advice is when you're busy searching for your classes and you know, putting that in very soon, balance for your life is a good thing. Uh, you're only 14, right? 13 and a half? 14 and a half. I get that one. Around 14. Balance where you can do schoolwork, maybe sports, maybe clubs, your friends, your family, relaxation, and free time is well how you'll get through grade nine with the least uh, 
with the least upset, really. We want you to have a tranquil, productive, hardworking, fun uh, year, but that's going to require balance and good decision making on your part. So hopefully that's the conversation you're having at home with your guidance counselors in your elementary schools. And the third piece of advice is, when you put into three elective choices, okay, you won't get all three, of course, right? And the computer does this sort of in a randomized kind of way. So don't get wedded in your mind to like, I only want, you know, elective A. If I get B or C, I'm going to really like, be upset. Now try to be a little more philosophical. Think of a big computer taking 500, well, really 2,050 kids' schedules and trying to do the very best it can. Um, it's not named Hal. Oh, it's a computer named Hal. That's a very good joke, actually. Yeah. Uh, inside joke there, guys. Um, two or three more things for you. We want you to know that um, almost inevitably, during four years, something may go wrong. Um, it's life, of course. It's not perfect, as much as we'd like it to be. Uh, when things go wrong, there are people here to help stitch you back together and help with whatever situation it is. You'll know your guidance counselor pretty well. You'll know the deans pretty well. Uh, the secretary, Ms. McIntosh, you'll know pretty well. Beyond that, however, there are three social workers who uh, we have access to. Um, if ever you have a concussion, and the number of concussions, as you can imagine, is going not down, rather up, okay? We have a, a program called Bright, uh, where if you are, once you return to functionality, you then go to Bright and get your work caught up, which is a great thing. We also have two social workers who work particularly in the area of substance abuse prevention, which we're pretty into here. Uh, and that's my list. So my message is this. We're going to give you as much information as we can between now and September, maybe the 7th. Is this the 7th? Close to the 7th. Yeah. Uh, about how to start. Your schedule will be come to you in you know, late August. You figure out how to access it in the, the, the portal, the student portal, and you hopefully it'll all be perfect. My message to you is this. It is a flood of information. We'll try to help you make the very best out of it. Okay? Ask a billion questions, and if anything goes wrong, you come to us. I'm now going to introduce Mr. Poon, who will say a few words about himself, and then go on to our panel of experts who are looking a little nervous, and you shouldn't be looking nervous here. Mr. Poon. Hello, ev hello, everyone. I'm incredibly excited to be able to speak to you. I, when, this was, when I was told that I was speaking at this event, I was told that it was going to be parents. But it's incredibly exciting to see so many students who are going to be our students next year. And when I thought about what I wanted to tell you in, uh, quickly, uh, I thought, what would I want to hear if I was an eighth grade parent? And I imagine that for some of you, you have um, older children who are already at the high school now. So you have a sense about who we are and what we do. Uh, but I honestly, what my thoughts turn to is that my son is in the seventh grade at Runkle School. And I, I kept thinking about how, even though I've worked here, this is my 20th year at the high school, how nervous I would be about having my son or daughter coming from the elementary school and then coming to the high school, which you repeatedly get told uh, is so big and getting bigger. What I would like to have heard, which I may hear next year, I guess, when I'm sitting in the audience listening to some other dean, is that at the core of Brookline High School is relationships. We really care about our students. I'm a teacher. I've got 24 seniors who I teach. I know them all. I work with them all. I care about all of them individually. We are going to know your son and daughter and take care of them. So part of what makes Brookline High excellent is that we have a deep and abiding passion for educating young people well, and the way that you do that is to know them well, have high expectations, and then teach them well. 
And I'll say to you that we're going to have a group at the adults could talk to you all night and give you facts and information. The best thing about Brookline High, and I think there are a lot of great things, are our students. And part of what's amazing about that, you will hear from some of them, now I'm sort of upping the pressure on them for how amazing they will have to be in their scintillating time with you. But what's going to be the best thing about us next year? Is your kids. And we are so excited to get them. And we're going to care for them. And so for the students here, part of what we're going to look out for you, but part of what I want, the message I want to give to the students who are coming to us next year, is that if you need help, then what I really want you to do is to ask someone. And then we're going to get you that help. And we are a fantastic academic institution. We've got great extracurriculars. There are so many things that your students will do when they get here. But the most important thing we're going to do is care for them. So I think that's what I want to hear next year. I'm going to tell the other team my speech so they can reassure me. Uh, but really, the important thing about tonight is that we're, I'm going to invite our ninth graders to come on up to the stage. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to have, I'm going to leave them in some questions. And then I'm going to ask them questions, and then they're going to give you their student insights on those questions. And then if we have time towards the end, if folks have questions for them, then we'll allow you guys to ask them questions. We'll see how the time goes in terms of how they fill it up. Um, they're going to begin by introducing themselves. Hi. Hi. I'm Alexander, and I went to Lincoln School. Hi, I'm Miles Avalon, and I went to Baker. Hey, I'm Layla, and I went to Driscoll. Hi, I'm Sasha, and I went to Heath School. Hi, I'm Claire, and I went to Pierce. Hi, I'm, <laughs> Hi, I'm Nafisa, and I went to Runkle. Hi, I'm Alex, and I went to school in Canada. <laughs> When, when I first spoke to Alex, I said, where did you go to uh, middle school? And he said, Canada. And I was like, that's a pretty big school. So um, I'm going to sit over there, and I'm going to give the mic. The first question that we have is, what has gone well in your transition from eighth to ninth grade? Um, definitely getting information was something that happened really well because the first day you go and like you meet there are just a lot of people that will give you information like your junior mentors and anybody that you ask but all of your teachers tell you what you need to know and that's good. Can you guys hear? Uh, gotta say a transition that went well for me is that the teachers are really good about easing you into the high school. They tell you exactly what you're going to be doing in the year. You can get prepared for it however you want. And uh, they're in advisory. You have junior mentors that uh, are kind of like teachers in a sense, but even louder, even louder. Speak right they're kind of like teachers in a sense, but um, <laughs> they they're more there for easing you in and not teaching. But I guess we're done with that. Um, I really enjoyed my guidance counselor because at the beginning of the year I had a lot of schedule issues and so going to my guidance counselor and he helped me right away with all of them. It was super easy, super simple and I didn't think it was going to be like that. So I'm really happy that he was there to help me. Um, all right, can you hear me? We're good. Right up to your mouth. There we go. Uh, describe the first day of school. In what ways was it most helpful to you? Um, so the first day of school, like you walk in and there's a bunch of people, you know that field across from the school? 
So you're all like on the Cypress Field, and you find your homeroom. So I'm personally in FR14. So your junior mentors will be holding a banner, and you'll find your homeroom, and they'll give you these T-shirts, and then you'll go to the quad, which is in the middle of the school, and you, all of the teachers will stand and applaud you, and basically there's this short assembly, and then you go to your advisory. And basically throughout the day, um, you just go to your different classes, and you get to see what the classes are about, more specifically the electives. In the other classes, you'll get some more information stuff and learn uh, what you're going to be learning throughout the year, what, for example, in like English, what books you're going to be reading. And most of the day is spent like getting information and just getting used to the school because you guys are the only ones who are going to be there that day. It's all freshmen. But then the day after that, the sophomores, juniors, and seniors join you. So it's really different. The first week of school is really nice because you don't do anything. You go to... <laughs> so good. <laughs> You go to all your classes, and you meet people, and you talk to your teachers, and it's super low-key, and so don't be scared the first day of school, because that's like the best day. You get, you get hamburgers. They give you hamburgers all for free. All downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> and so don't be worried about the first day of school, because it's honestly very simple. Um, I think the first day of school is a good time to like find all your classes, because it's just freshmen there. so. You have time to like walk around and try to figure out what class you are because if you haven't been in the building before, it's kind of big and it takes time to getting used to. So, it's good. It's good. Find your class. The one thing that they didn't say was that all, besides the fact that it's only freshmen, there's also like junior junior mentors like during your classes they're like posted around the school and if you don't know where a classroom is, you could just like ask them like, hey, where's 336 and they could just be like oh it's around the corner or sometimes they'll even walk you there so that's also helpful so one of the takeaways in terms of the first day of school besides it's the best day of the whole year killing me um, is that there are a lot of people who are there to help you find your way and so ask questions so and they're both students and adults looking to help you find your way all right, here's the next question. In what ways has the school most supported you this year? Okay. Hi. Um, so um, I think uh, the second month of school, I realized that my math class was going just a little too fast for me. So um, I went to my guidance counselor and I uh, told him this. And um, he said, maybe you want to switch down to standard. And so I talked to my teacher and everyone, I think my guidance counselor, my mom, everyone, they all just helped me um, decide whether I wanted to move down or um, stay where I was. And I ended up moving down, which was a really good choice for me. Um, I think X Block is one of the greatest inventions in, on earth <laughs> um, because all the teachers are around and if you're having trouble with anything, you can just go and they're all there and they help you. And, um, <laughs> and I really don't like waking up early, so going to Xbox is really nice. So what's awesome about that is Xbox is the period where we don't have classes. <laughs> but so what happens at Xbox is that kids do clubs, and so our activities, kids just can have free time. It's connected to lunch, and there's have a wider space. And you can also go see your guidance counselor, go see your teachers. X block, you can do your homework. X block is whatever, it's kids free choice time during the week. Um, I think what most helped me in the high school was the support system. Because in the beginning you're new, you don't know anything. But you have all these people who can like help you. Um, your teachers, your guidance counselor, even like your dean. Just everyone is out there to help you and you need to remember that because like I was scared to go to my guidance counselor and ask for help, but when I did, it helped me a lot. So I just recommend keeping that in mind when you start high school. I think the one thing that supported me really well was when I realized that my math class was also going 
too fast, like Sasha, for example. Um, I talked to my guidance counselor, and they were like, we have like extra help centers in the morning to help you with your classes. There's extra help for most classes, right, or all of them? All the academic classes. I know math and physics, for example, because I go there all the time because I need help with homework or testing quizzes, and there are teachers there early in the morning who help you if you have questions on anything. Um, I stayed in my math class. So uh, one of the takeaways I hope you have from that question is that there are tons of people looking to support you in your academic classes, where to go. Even deans can be helpful. You hear that, Ms. Bouchard? This is the question for you guys. Ready? In what ways have your parents most helped you? There cannot be silence on this question. How have your parents helped you with your transition here? Well, at first I thought, you know, being a freshman, the workload is a lot more than an eighth grade piece scared. Um, but my parents were like, you know what, you're going to get new homework strategies, it's going to do everything. They're, they told me what to do, and I did it. Now I'm doing much better than before. So. I'd say my parents helped me out the most by, like, teaching me that if I'm, like, in any situation that I don't feel that any class is going the speed that's going to help me, they taught me to, like, go to my deans or go to my teacher and, like, speak to them and ask them, like, what I can do or what they think the problem is how I, so, how, so I can fix it, like, going forward. Um, my parents helped me, they, like, pushed me to try new things. Like, um, my brother did mock trial, and I really wasn't into the idea of doing that. They were like, Lily, you should do it. And so I joined it, and it was actually something that was really nice, and I met a lot of new people. And I, like, they've just pushed me to join other things, but not too much. So that was good. Um, my parents helped me move up into a harder English class at a time before we were allowed to move up, and so that was really nice. So my parents helped me by like supporting me with my decision because I was in advanced math, but then I was finding it like really hard, and I decided to drop down to honors. Um, so I think really the most important thing for me was their support, but also just giving me enough space to do what I needed to do to get done, but also like pushing me to challenge myself, and I think that's like really important. Um, my parents helped me a lot when it came to my organizational skills. As an eighth grade, I wasn't the most organized kid ever, but then they helped me like get better and make sure I was on top of all my classes and on top of everything. They like check in with me to make sure that like I'm doing okay. They'd be like, so how's math going? Are you going to extra help? Are you going to see your teacher? Like my parents are really good like supporting me and make sure that I can do my best at all times. Um, my parents, um, well, they, anytime I had a problem, I would always complain to them. Um, so anytime I would, uh, my mom would always have me think about it in a different way. And it, that usually was the solution to the problem. So, yeah. So I, I thought that was going to be a response for the parents, but I think it wound up being a response for the students in the room. Uh, as a parent, I like the response that was, do what your parents say to do. I also like the response that was, my parents were right most of the time. I think the big skill that I also heard that was really important is parents helping students with self-advocacy. And that one of the great ways that you can help your uh, son or daughter is by saying, all right, so how can you go and talk to your teacher, your guidance counselor, your dean? How can your, your son or daughter be learn sort of that skill of going and self-advocating for themselves, whether it's needing extra help in the class, or it's what to do in social situations, or what to do in terms of navigating one's schedule. And so, but all of that, part of what we really want, it, it's, at the ninth grade, we want to be 
fully all over supporting your students as much as possible for that transition. But as they go through school, we want them to develop the skill of navigating things themselves. Because we hope when they take their dignified next step out of Brookline High School, they know how to make best access of whatever school or job or situation that they come into next. All right, here is our next question. What, you've, you've referenced it already, what is advisory? Freshman advisory. Um, ad advisory is a class that meets every Tuesday. I don't know, but um, it's the it's group that you meet on your first day of school and that you'll be meeting with every week. Um, you have an advisor who is there to kind of look, oversee the class, but it's mostly run by your junior mentors who are there to help answer questions and just not only be your advisors, but your friends. Um, and you, they tell you about stuff that's going on in the school, like opportunities, and you go to assemblies where you learn new stuff, and yeah. They also tell you a lot of announcements that are going on, so if a club's meeting, or if they, you need to sign up for a certain class soon to get into it, they will tell you and it will make the process simpler. So I'm not talking about advising in general, but I'm not sure many of you know what junior mentors are, so I'm just going to explain that. So junior mentors are juniors. You, I have four in my advisory, and I think that's pretty standard. Um, and they're basically just there to run the advisory, and um, they just help you just kind of adjust on your first day, and they run the activities in advisory and things. So sophomore year, students go through a rather rigorous application process so that as juniors, they can be support folk within the junior classes. And so it's actually a pretty competitive process for finding four juniors. We, there are two students apply for every one position. And what they are applying to is to be the folk that get to work with freshmen closely and help them with their transition. So we want both students supporting students as well as the adults. All right, how have you managed the stress of your transition to ninth grade? Well, I will say that the jump from eighth grade to ninth grade is not an easy one, especially if you're not prepared to work harder than you did in eighth grade. Because when I, when I got to the high school, I was under the misconception that like you could work, if you were getting say A's and B's in middle school, you could work the same, like you could work as hard and get the same grades. But I learned quickly that in order to get the same grades in high school, you have to work twice as hard as you did in middle school. Uh, for me personally, the change was kind of big because you go from having maybe like an hour or two of homework per night, maybe more some nights if you have like a project or something, to maybe two, maybe even like three hours of homework or more per night. So it was a lot of change, but I think the main thing that like kept me going was I joined the swim team, so that kind of just like made me use my time management skills that like I would just get everything done and out of the way and I was like kind of on autopilot for like the for that part of the season but then after that I kind of had to work on my own to time manage so basically like you just need to get your stuff done and then you can always like do other things and yeah uh, another thing that exists is friends they're really helpful because you know they're always there to help you when you're sort of having a hard time, you can ask them about the homework, they can help you get the answers, and it's really good to hang out with your friends and do fun things after school. Uh, it's a really good stress reliever, I found for me, but that's for you to decide. I think when I'm stressed sometimes, I go and I like to talk to my parents about it because they've been through it before, like they've been through it, I've been through it, and they like to help me make sure that I 
make sure I know everything that I'm supposed to know and how to be better than I am currently. Also, teachers are really helpful in that. Like, if you're stressed out in a class, you should go talk to your teacher because they will help you get back on track and help you understand things that you've missed out on. The next question goes right along. You guys touched on it a little bit, but I'm going to be a little more specific. How have you found the workload to be at the high school? It's, I mean, and, and I guess you've touched on it a little bit, but do you feel prepared and supported to do the work that you have? I think the teachers at the elementary schools do a really good job of preparing you for the high school. The workload is a lot more, but they do do a good job to help ease you in. Like in eighth grade, it does get harder than it was in past years. So like they do prepare you really well for ninth grade because ninth grade is harder and the jump is harder. Yeah, the workload is definitely more, but I found that the teachers uh, sort of, it, they gave you sort of an eighth grade level of amount level of work and then through the beginning week or so they kind of increased it each night I didn't really notice it at first but then the time started to increase and I realized that this was high school again so I, I mean it's a pretty good way of using it um, just a little tip um, procrastination doesn't make your work go away <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I learned that the hard way. Um, for a month, I just put everything off until the last minute, and I was stressed and like all the time. And that's just not how you want to go on with high school. High school, um, and yeah, time management is a big thing um, in high school. So yeah. Uh, Driscoll did not really prepare me at all for <laughs> high school. <laughs> <laughs> the work went from zero to a hundred, pretty much. Um, there is a lot of homework compared to Driscoll. I don't know about the other elementary school, middle schools, but um, I had a lot more of my free time taken up by high school, and I learned pretty quickly that I should do my work before I do a lot of other things. So. Um, I think for me the main thing was just staying on top of my work because like I'm a huge procrastinator like a huge procrastinator um, So there were like these two weeks where I, like I didn't have anything to do but schoolwork And I put it off for like five hours and then I was like rushing at like one in the morning to finish it Don't do that. It's not smart um, Because then you'll be like tired the next day and you'll just be a mess So just like stay on top of your work and just try to finish it on time and then you can like do whatever you want um, I'm taking a mix of honors and standard classes, and I have to say, Pierce did a really great job preparing me. All my <laughs> all my standard classes workload is about the same as eighth grade, which is really nice. But honors class is definitely a push, and the teachers do expect you to do better than they did last year. What's awesome is that we're recording this, and so. Certainly, there will be no phone calls from Driscoll or par par uh, Pierce parents about their preparedness. I'm sure we all have, different students have different experiences in their preparedness. That's my official response. But, but also, the note where, the point of the program where you note that we did not tell the students what to say when they got up here. All right, so I think this is a, a key bit of wisdom that they're gonna, and I, and I think that each of you should answer this one, all right? What do you know now that you wish you knew in September? And so this could be about school, friendship, social life, uh, what's been fun in school, what have you learned? What do you wish you knew then that you know now? Um, so I learned about two months into school about like the support programs that they have like before school starts where you can go and like get any questions out get any questions answered that you had about homework and I wish I had like 
known about those like at the beginning of the year because at the beginning I kind of just like I was like oh it's freshman year so I could just ease into it but since since I took all honors classes my first year which was a bit of a jump I learned very quickly that there was no way I was gonna get I was gonna understand anything without like putting in extra effort so support support programs in the morning are there to help you so that's what I'd say I think for me I wish I would have known how to use my time better because like in the fall I didn't play a sport or anything like that so I had a lot of time after school like well then I go to home and do my homework but I had a lot of time but then in the winter I played basketball and the season just ended but in like but um, you have practice six days a week for basketball and most other sports too. And I played freshman, we still had practice six days a week. And it's hard to like manage like your homework and like your sports and still do hang out with your friends and stuff. So I wish I knew in the fall how to like manage that better because in the winter it was kind of hard. Cause like we had midterms too and midterms were during basketball season and I had a game, like a day of a midterm and it was hard cause I wanted to prepare for my game but I also really want to do well in my midterms. So. Um, I wish I knew that I would um, not lose a lot of friends, but I wouldn't see them as much. Because right now, from Driscoll, I only really have two, fr two or three friends that I've stayed connected with. Um, you definitely lose track of a lot of your friends. And it's hard to stay connected with people if you don't have classes with them. See, because I was fortunate enough to have physics with one of my best friends but you make a lot of new friends which is something that I wish I knew but you also do lose some so um, probably something I would have wanted to know in eighth grade is not to be scared of the upperclassmen because um, I, because I avoided them for about two months. Um, yeah, they're just like really, really helpful sources. Um, whenever like you have like a question or you need help with um, homework or anything, um, I for midterms I went to a sophomore who had already gone through the process of midterms and she helped me like have like a guide. Um, for each studying day, which I, was a lifesaver. Um, and yeah, that's just a very big part. Yeah. Um, Sasha took mine. <laughs> I'm friends with a lot of upperclassmen right now, and that's nice. Um, also, I was one of those people who in eighth grade, I was like, yeah, I'm not afraid of high school. And then like two weeks before high school started, I was like, oh god, I'm actually going to be in a grade with like 500 other kids. And that kind of took me off guard. And like a few days before high school started, I realized that everyone else is going through the same thing as I am. Like everyone else is there. Everyone else is a new student in a new school going through the same things, trying to find new friends. And after I realized that, it was a lot easier transition to know that everyone else was just as freaked out as I was. <laughs> OK, for me, um, it was just I wish that I knew that the high school isn't as big and scary as it seems. Because like when I was sitting like where you guys are now, I was terrified. Like it's the high school is huge. We have four levels and there are so many kids. There are around two thousand kids. So there's a lot to be scared of. But then I realized that like we have classes and clubs and everything. So you like find your own like niche in the high school. And there you can like make friends. So personally, when I came to BHS, I only had like a handful of my friends from Runkle, and then like two friends from outside of school. And from those two friends outside of school, like five friends from Runkle, I like made friends with so many more people. Um, and you just have to know that it's not big and scary. You might get lost a lot in the beginning. I know I did, but you should know that there are a lot of people who will be there for you and not to be scared about anything. Personally, I wish I knew more about the lunch schedule. Um, on the first day, I got totally lost because there's like a first lunch, second lunch kind of deal where you have first lunch, then you take class when people are having second lunch. But 
I read the schedule wrong and I thought that I had uh, first lunch. Turns out uh, I was the other way around. Entirely missed my elective class, but that's okay now because now I know how the lunch schedule works. Um, and it's okay, my teacher was really relaxed about it. She's like, okay, don't worry about it. It's first day, you're gonna get lost. Um, but yeah, I really wish, really wish I was more organized first day. I, yeah, um, I also wish um, that I had known to pay a lot of attention at the beginning because midterms are everything from the beginning of the year to where you are at that point. So pay attention to everything that happens in the beginning because you will forget some of it and come back and be like, what do I do now? So pay attention. I think also for like midterms in the beginning of the year, it's really important to keep all your notes from the beginning. Because I remember in eighth grade, like when we finished a subject or anything, or my teacher was like, okay, you can recycle it and just throw it out. But now that you have midterms and stuff, you need to keep all of that because your teacher's going to be like, all right, you have to go back to your notes in the beginning of the year. And some teachers are nice enough to give you study guides, but you still need to go back to your notes to, to, to be able to figure all this stuff out. All right, so we have a little bit of time for question and answer. Dima Chair, will you grab um, the, the movable mic from over here? And so what we're going to do is uh, we'll take um, questions from the crowd, and uh, Dima Chair will try to get the mic to you. What, when we, when we, uh, what we'll do is we'll, when we hear the question, we'll repeat it, I'll repeat it, or one of you guys will repeat it, and then we'll answer it. All right, so raise your hand if you have a question, and Dima Chair will try to come over to you. I'll try to alternate kids and parents. Hi. Uh, first, I want to say I thought you all did an outstanding job, and you're all amazing young people. You're all very uniquely articulate. It was wonderful to hear from all of you. Um, I was wondering what your experience with extracurriculars were, and how to not get overwhelmed and too involved, and what were your highlights of extracurriculars um, this year and maybe some things that you decided you had to ditch because it was too much and can you be happy here and not be involved in sports all right so I feel that there's there's really no such well there is such thing as like too many extracurricular activities but like I think you should have like at least two or three because like if you have extracurricular activities, as Miles said earlier, they, some of them, most of them meet around six times a week. But if you have extracurricular activities, you can, you can like, I don't know how to say it, but like, put you, you could use that time as like a break around your studying. So you could be like, okay, I'm gonna study for this subject here. Then I have this practice here. Then when I get back home, I can study for this. And then I can eat dinner, take a shower, and then do the rest of my studying then. So I guess you can like manage your time easier if you know that you have like plan not pl well breaks in between so it makes it easier. Um okay, so I remember at the beginning of the year, um there was a club fair and I was so excited and I signed up for five clubs. <laughs> and um like mock trial, Y STEM, which is woman in science, technology, engineering, and math, um, all those. And I went to, I tried to get to all of them, but it never really worked, so I had to cut four of those. So <laughs> now I'm only in one, but um, why stem? Yes. Um, and so, yeah, just don't over, overload yourself, but um, also it's great to sign up for anything you can. Um, I love sports and I signed up for a ton of them and honestly I can't think of any reason not to because you meet people and it helps you time manage so if you enjoy sports that's definitely something you should do. Okay personally I'm really lazy so I don't really like working out but I decided to go for it and join the swim team and I can say that for me the swim team was like this group of really awesome, supportive people that I could go to like if I'm having a bad day or something because 
we met before school started during like the preseason and then we were together um, pretty much every day <laughs> for the rest of that until around November. So I think joining a sport gives you kind of like this supportive group, but also like if you're into drama or you're into like other things, you can always join clubs or do a play. There's a freshman play that you guys can do next year. So there's a lot of like special stuff for freshmen to do. Um, there are a lot of freshman teams that you can join. Um, and my main thing, like Sasha said, was like, not to overload yourself with a lot of stuff. Like I know some kids, they do math outside of school and they play an instrument and they play a sport. But what ends up happening is they don't have that much time for themselves and for their social life. And they say it kind of sucks. So <laughs> I'd say not to <laughs> overload yourself and kind of just try to balance it out and not have too many things going on. Good question. You a kid way back there in stripes? What time do you go to sleep? There's a good one. Oh. Um, I usually try to go to sleep by like uh, 11. Um, but it usually ends up being around like 11.30 or 12. Depending on your workload, it's like 10.30 to 2. <laughs> okay, so I try to go to sleep at like 10 because I like sleep, but I mean, like, who doesn't? But I have a lot of friends who procrastinate and they go to sleep at like 6 in the morning. Just, just try not to be that person because it sucks. I've tried, it doesn't help at all. So, yeah. This is a very short wire. Um, yes, yeah, it's okay. Um, yeah, usually I try to go to bed around 10, like Nafisa over here, because sleep is a very enjoyable thing. Um, <laughs> but usually I end up, like, you know what, I'm going to finish this game that I'm playing, or I'm going to finish watching this video or got to finish these questions at homework and usually it ends up being 11 or 11.30 but let's not focus on that, let's focus on trying to, the goal is 10, the goal is 10. Sometimes I'll get texts from friends at 4 in the morning and I don't see them till the next day and I just think, why were you up at 4 in the morning, what do you have to do then? So that's a lot of what you see. So that's a lot of variety, perhaps another question, we'll try to fit another one or two in. Before we wrap it up. If you could change something that you found uh, was lacking or that could be better for you, what would that be? Oh, come on, somebody. You're holding the mic, go ahead. <laughs> um, I'd say while most of your teachers are pretty supportive, there will be a couple, I've had like one or two that, because they have a lot of students or they're just overloaded with a lot of work, won't have that much time to help you personally. But because we have like the math and science and like writing and et cetera, help centers, it kind of makes up for that. So just take advantage of that. That's all I have to say. I mean, what could be better for me is I do enjoy weekends as much as the next guy. Um, but maybe, I'm, I'm not sure, but if we could extend the weekend to Monday. Uh, <laughs> I don't think we're doing that. I think we have time for one more question. Yep. One more question. I want to wrap, I have two thoughts to wrap up. A student question over here, and Brian, if you want a last word as well. Uh, 
Sure. As far as balancing like standard and honors classes go, um, was it like what ratio do you guys have? Just for having the, like, the question was what was the division of standard or honor classes? And I, and I guess I'm, I, I might add on to that to say, sir, what's your division of standard and honor? But what sort of led you to figure out? Because some of you changed level, some of you stayed in level. What were some of the factors that went into you figuring out what your schedule would be? Okay, well, I'm currently taking all honors classes, and for those of you uh, overachievers, or not overachievers, but har really hard workers, I would recommend it. But if you're someone who, who like wants to work hard but doesn't want to be up every night till 11:30 doing homework, then all honors is not the path for you. Yeah, with Alex, I also take all honors classes too. But like, I feel like sometimes when I take all honors, it's like you don't have like enough time to hang out with your friends as much as you do in eighth grade. So I mean, like if you do want to like see your friends more, like have more times to do things that you would like to do instead of doing homework for your classes, I would say maybe like take a few standard classes and a few honors classes, maybe do like a mix or something like that. Uh, I'm taking all honors in advanced math, um, except for French. I'm taking French one, um, but I would say. Um, if you're thinking about taking all honors, but you kind of have doubts, I would just go for it because I think it's easier to switch down from a class than move up. So. Um, I'm taking all honors except for one standard math class, which I switched down. Um, and I switched down because it was moving too fast and I wasn't keeping up and uh, it just wasn't working for me. And yeah, and if you feel that way, then you definitely should um, consider switching down. I'm taking a blend of honors and standard, mostly standard. Um, and I definitely think that I should have taken more honors classes. Like most of the uh, um, <laughs> subjects, like physics, for example, is very, very close to being honors and standard at the same level. And so if you are not sure about if you want to take a s honors or a standard class, definitely do honors because it's a lot better that way. <laughs> um, so for me, the only difference between like standard honors and advanced is really the workload and also like the pace that it goes. Um, so I take all honors classes um, and I take two languages, so I'm in Chinese one. So for me, honors, and then like a second language is a lot of work, but I think you kind of just have to see how you yourself um, are gonna balance it out because some people, they're better with standard classes, some people are better with all honors and advanced, so it's really like what you personally feel that's gonna fit. Oh gosh, this water's going. Um, on, I'm taking all honors except my language because I decided to take a new one. Uh, don't. Please don't, I beg of you, don't stay up until 11.30 doing homework. Take a blend of standard and honors classes, because honors classes looks good on your high school, what is it? Re re on your, just your resume. And, but sta taking standard classes is also important because obviously the you have to have a balance of your work. So if you think you can handle all honors classes or even, it, or even a few advanced or one, one advanced in all honors, then do it if you think you can do it. But it's good because you get an option to switch down if you don't. But just try to keep a balance of your workload. So before we thank uh, our wonderful panelists, I have two thoughts I want to share from my years of experience here. And Mr. Poon will wrap it up as well. Um, one educator perspective that I really want the students to hear, uh, no matter what kind of student you were in grades K through 8, our sort of mantra here is always that we believe that students always want to be doing well in high school. You're going to define that doing well as you see fit, but we want that to be in your head that we know that you always want to be doing well here. In the other perspective, and I've been watching kids come from 8th grade for a long, long time and then watching the process of transition to the high school, the social transition. You come from a small school with a class of 50 or even the big schools, even Devotion and Pierce and such, they're small groups compared to 530. The 
Uh, and this is really for parents. When you watch your son and daughter go through the very friend uh, transition that you heard the kids talk about, the losing of friends, the desire to making of new friends, uh, knowing that you've come from one school and there's seven other uh, groups of kids who come together. That makes a lot of social energy happening for great ninth graders, and I want parents to be particularly uh, uh, you know, attentive to that because of making friends, losing friends, who is friends with whom, becomes sort of like the be all and end all in grade nine. Um, words of wisdom and Mr. Poon. I, I actually decided I have three quick words of wisdom. The first one, I want to reiterate what Alex said, balance. When you come to the high school, parents and students have good balance. And that's in your academic life, your social life, your activities. Just be mindful of yourself. Um, and if you can maintain balance, then so much will be better for you in the long run. Uh, the second thing I want to say is that I can imagine that this panel was informative, was funny, was scary at times. And um, I've, I've been here for 20 years. And one of the things which is going to happen is that in three years, or I guess for you guys, four years, when I'm looking at these guys, we're going to have a senior panel. And what we do is we invite Brookline High graduates to come back from college to talk about their experiences in college and how Brookline High prepared them for going out into that dignified next step. And I will guarantee you that when you come to that meeting, when students and teachers come to the, students, parents come to that meeting, that our graduates are going to come back to you and say a couple of things. One, Brookline High School prepared them to go to the next level of their schooling and prepared them well. And the second thing they will say is that they loved Brookline High School and that we cared for them. And that goes back to the first message I wanted to leave with you uh, to start with, is that Brookline High is going to really care for your kids and for you students who are here as well. And then the thing I want to end the night with is let's have a great round of applause for our students and their candor. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. We are so excited to see you in September. Finish up eighth grade well.